Welcome to our next video about the Behringer Crave. Today we're going to start talking about the sequencer. Before I do that, I just want to say thank you to all the people that have taken the time to subscribe to the channel, watch the videos, leave some comments. It's nice to know that this information is helpful, and I hope you continue to find the videos useful. So, if you're not familiar with sequencers, the first question we should answer is, what does a sequencer do? And the point of a sequencer is to store information and then play it back in a continuously repeating loop. The smallest unit of storage is called a step, and a sequence is just a series of steps, which is why you'll often hear them called step sequencers. Now, what kind of information can we store in a step? Now, the obvious answer is, well, that's where we store our notes, and that's correct but we can store other things there too. We can store the length of the note. We can store how many times the note is repeated during a step. We can store how we get to the note in the step, whether it just starts or we slide to it. We can set the note's volume, and we can also set whether there's any note at all. We can make that step silent. So let's look at the different things that we can find in a single step. The default note on a step is a C in the fourth octave. So if you just turn on your Crave, you'll see the green light here is telling you we're in kind of page one of our sequencer. The red light says we're in the fourth octave. This note is a C. If I just press play on my sequencer, let's make sure there's nothing there. If I just push play, I'm just hearing this C over and over again. Now I can change that to any note I like. If I press record and I press an A flat, and I press play, now I'm playing that note. I can also store silence here. So I press record. Here's my first step. If I press the hold slash rest button, I've now stored silence in that step. If I push play, nothing. You'll also see the green light flashing above location 8 on step 1, and that tells you that there is a rest here. As soon as I play a pitch, instead, if I was to record a pitch into step 1, you'll see that the green light turns off. That tells me that there's now a note in step 1. We can also add an accent to a note. And what this will do is it'll make the note slightly louder and a little bit brighter. It turns up the VCA and the cutoff filter just a little bit. We talked about this earlier in the patch bay section. This is the default output of the assign patch, whether a note in a sequence has a uh, accent on it. So to do this, just like I was doing before, here's the first step. I have an E flat in here. If I press the reset slash accent button, now there's an accent on that note, and it's going to play a little bit louder and a little bit brighter than the other notes. And you'll see that the green light has appeared above the 7. So I'm going to push play. And then I'm going to remove the accent. So it's a little duller. If I turn down the cutoff, that'll actually make a difference. dull note. I'm going to add an accent to it. So you can hear at the beginning there's a little pop of volume and a little pop of cutoff. The length of a note is called the gate time. We talked about gate time when we did the patch bay. This is a one of the standard outputs in your patch bay. And this refers to how long the note is sounding during a step. So for example, if I just go back to my standard here, notice I'm pushing shift reset pattern each time. That just clears out everything, and we just go back to that single C repeating. I'm recording step one here. If I turn up the gate time, you'll see this number of lights increasing from 1 to 8, and then all the way back down to 1. 1 is the shortest amount of time that a note will sound during a step. So if I was to press play, 
It's a very short note. The step is the same amount of time that it was before. As you can tell by the green light here, this is flashing the tempo. As I go faster, the note actually becomes shorter because, well, we'll talk about why <laughs> a little later. But as I, if I increase this now to four, that's the default, press play, the note lasts longer. If I turn this up to seven, the note lasts just about the entire length of the step. You'll notice that when I increased that step length to seven from where it was back here at four, it took a second for the tempo of the sequencer to catch up to where the new location of the tempo knob was. So if you start changing things and you're using the tempo knob, just be ready to hear a little time between the sequencer understanding that, oh, the tempo knob has moved. So back to gate length seven. This is about the longest amount of time that you can set. When you set your gate to eight, what this will do is connect the note to the next step. So if, for example, I record a note in step two, let's say it's also a C. I'm just gonna push a C twice. Now I have a two-step pattern. Now I've set the gate length of this step to eight. This is now a tie where this note will connect to this note and the envelope will not re-trigger. So now we're just hearing a, it's just sounding. We're not hearing any kind of re-triggering. If I change that gate to seven, and then also change the gate of this step to seven, we'll actually hear two separate pitches. And you'll see, again, it took a second for the tempo to catch up. So eight is a useful value, it's a tie, but if you set a bunch of steps to eight and you're expecting your envelope to re-trigger on every step, uh, it may not happen. Even if you have different pitches, I'm gonna reset my pattern, record, As it's playing, I can, no, you can't change gate time while it's playing. Because if you press shift and you turn your tempo knob, you're gonna change the swing. So I'm gonna take step one, turn it up to eight. Step two, turn it up to eight. Step three, turn its gate up to eight. Now, you know that the note has changed every time. So the notes are as long as they can be. Now let's say I make a change to the envelope. I've turned up the attack time, but we're not hearing any time at the beginning of each pitch for the note to grow. If I were to change my gate time to seven and press play, now we can hear the gate re-triggering the envelope re-triggering. So when you set your gate to eight, you are overriding the trigger condition. So just something to be aware of. Now so far when I push play, I hear the note once per step. If I go pretty slow, I'm just hearing the note one time per beat. However, there is a feature called Ratchet, which will allow me to play the note up to four times per step. You set this by, also, I've been editing each step by pressing shift and then the step that I want to edit. 
Should have mentioned that sooner. <laughs> if you press shift and turn the glide knob, you'll see one yellow light. This means you're only going to hear one note per step. If I hold shift and I turn this until I see two, two yellow lights, now I will hear the note twice per step. I can turn it to three and hear it three times. And I can turn it to four and hear it four times. So this is called ratchet. If you have ratchet enabled on a step, you'll see the green light appear above the number six. Ratchet is also affected by gate time. So let's set this tempo here. I'm going to put a, uh, let's put a triple gate on here. And then I'm just going to turn the, this. Okay, now we're at a length of four. I'm going to push play. If I shorten the gate length, you can hear that the note is very short. If I increase the gate length all the way to seven, the note is really long. If I increase my gate length to eight, remember what happened before, same thing happens here. So even though I've added a bunch of ratchet, it doesn't matter. I've set my gate length to eight, which means everything is tied. So if you're not getting functionality that you expect, check your gate time. The longest that you can use is seven if you want things to re-trigger. Let's add two pitches to our sequence. So we're going to record a new one. Our first pitch is going to be a C. And then I'm going to go up two octaves to a six octave and press C again. Okay, so now I have two pitches in my sequence that are two octaves apart. Now you notice when the note starts, it simply starts, <laughs> much as you would expect it to. However, if I were to go to step two, Shift 2. Now I'm editing step 2. I'm going to add glide to this note. And I'm going to do that simply by turning the glide knob until the green light appears above the number 5. Now, if I press play, the gate time will begin by gliding up to the goal pitch on step two. So you're essentially saying, when you turn on glide, I want you to glide to this note as opposed to simply playing it. If I increase glide time, it takes longer. If I turn it down, you just hear a little scoop. You might have noticed another problem. When I do this, the glide time is so long for the gate, I'm not even getting up to the second octave note. This is what it should sound like. So this is a neat way to give some of your pitches a little bit of an accent. It's just a really short glide time. It just gives them a fun little sound at the beginning. Slightly different than the, the brighter and louder thing. So the knob still is going to determine how much glide takes place. All you can do for a step is determine whether it glides or not. Now let's do something else. Let's increase the gate time on the first step. That's at seven. Second step, also at seven. What if I increase the first step to eight? And the second step to eight. Okay. 
So now we're getting a nice glide between the two pitches. We glide to step two because it has glide turned on, but we don't glide to step one because it does not have glide turned on. I can put glide on step one by selecting it and turning the glide knob until the green light appears above five. Press play. And I can change the amount of glide time here, how long it takes for that to happen. Turn it up too high, and you don't even have time to get to the two pitches. So, within each step, we don't only have what note we're playing. We can also have a rest, or a silence. We can also have an accent. We can determine how long the note lasts. We can add ratchet using shift and glide. Your sequencer can store up to 32 of these steps. So the numbers one through eight here will be your first eight with the green light on one. If you continue to record steps, this number will change to the green two, and then you'll be storing them in spots nine through 16. So for example, I'm just going to push record. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now I'm going to add a ninth note. And now you'll see two here. Whenever a light is flashing, this is referring to the last note in the sequence. Now I'm on to page three. And now I'm on to page four. And now I'm done. It won't record any more notes. I've reached 32. Let's play this beautiful creation. <laughs> <laughs> 